fight for the Davis Cup. Reserve your seats this Easter weekend with BBC Television and Radio 5 Live. Showtime. Now on BBC One, Tough Talk with Kilroy. Hello and good morning. School days are supposed to be the happiest days of your life, aren't they? Of course they are. But for many children, the thought of getting up each morning and going to school fills them with dread. Why? Because they're being bullied. The government says they should tell on the bullies. And of course they should. But that's not so easy, is it? If the bullying is actually ruining your life. And that's a bit like What's happening to you, Daniel, isn't it? Yeah. What's happening? Well, I was a victim of bullying for three years and I left school in October because of it, because it was making me ill. What were they doing? It, it was things that may seem too like childish, but to me they really hurt. It was the name calling and spreading rumours and it was all stuff like that. Who was doing it? At, at the beginning it was one girl in particular. And it went on fl like that for about two years, well, two, nearly three years. And then in October, two other girls joined in. And it started becoming outside of school, and that's, that's where my When parents you say joined you, so there was a gang of them, what, calling you names? Yeah. Do you want to tell me what kind of things were being said? I don't think I can. No, OK. What do you mean, because it's rude or because it's uncomfortable for you? The both. Both. Yeah. And how, was this persistent? Was this day in, day out? No, I mean, it, it went on for about, well, it started and I told my mum straight away and the teachers would speak to them and then they'd, they'd stop for about a week and then it'd start all over again and it went on like this for so long. Why do you think they were doing it? I don't know. Did you ever ask them? My mum asked them. She um, had a meeting with one of them. A meeting um, or a confrontation? No, a meeting. It what was, was the meeting one, was it? Meeting. It was yeah. with the school permission. Okay. It was with the teachers there. And why did they say they were doing it, Jacqueline? They didn't know. They didn't know? No. They are just picking on her? Mm. Because she was the weaker or the more vulnerable. Were there reasons why you think they might have been doing it? No, I really, I really don't know why. I mean, I, d I don't know. I'm not with her every day and I'm at school. I don't know how she is at school. But Daniel, these were your school friends. These were the people in the same class as you, 15, the same age as you. Didn't you ever say, don't, you're hurting me. You're making me miserable. You're making me depressed. Yeah, I did. You said all that. And what did they say? They just laughed. That made them stronger and you weaker. How did it actually make you feel? I said, you, I, I just said, then you're making me miserable and depressed. Is that the description of how you felt? Yeah, I was depressed and I developed uh, migraines and also I suffer from alopecia because of it so but on that morning when you get up and you got to go to school how did you feel I just felt ill all the time you didn't want to go no you dreaded going to school and that's why you stopped going yeah so you're not taking your exams I'm doing English and English literature and also I'm doing Spanish and that's it, I've had to drop all the rest of them. Why couldn't you sort it out, Mum? I don't know. I mean, every time anything happened, I contacted the school. I spoke to um, the teachers at the school, and very, very nice. Tried, I think they tried as hard as they could with the limitations that they've got. Well, I don't understand that. Why you, you know who's doing it. You know it's vindictive, nasty, spiteful, unmerited. You say, stop it, or else, don't you? Well, yeah, I mean, I'd love to have been able to go and say that to the children concerned. But the school but can do that. This, I don't think the school can do that. Why can't it do that? I think it's that easy. I think they are... It's, it's, not, it's a lot harder than... I mean, in my particular case, it's almost the same thing. I mean, it's the childish things. I either get completely ignored or I get verbal abuse. 
And in my environment, I mean, on my examinations, it's really important for me to work in group environments, but they just don't allow it. They'll just completely block me out. I mean, um, they'll, they'll uh, talk to me only if they completely have to, but if they can't, then, you know, they just won't. If I, for example, say, try to put in ideas or try to talk to them at How all. How are you bullied? Um, the way I'm bullied is that I, uh, it's the complete isolation. They don't respect me at all. They, my nationality sometimes comes into it as being American, and they'll take a bit, um, you know, of the make out of that. But um, I get sometimes I get pens thrown at me, or I'll just get verbal abuse if they've got an off day. So it's a mental kind of torture yeah, or cruelty a, rather than physical. But didn't you have bruises too? No. No, no never. No, okay. No what, how did it change your personality? She become very, very um, abusive to me. Yeah. Because she I would come home. Yeah. Yes. Um, Danielle, it, it's it's all um, emotional and abuse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And was it the same for you? Yeah. It's it's it, it's really emotional. It's mental. It just starts you doubting yourself. You get aggressive then to everybody else. Your defensive just go up so quickly. And even if your mom's trying to help you, you just get. So do defensive. you get aggressive towards your mother? See, I, do I can handle it myself. Sometimes, or? sometimes I do get aggressive to my mom about it. It's because you just want somebody to understand, and it's so difficult. The police um, may never touch you, but it's mental, emotional, yeah. but kind of abusive. Yeah, Describe you know, it for me. Yeah. Um, picking on specific things about you, the way you look, mm -hmm. the way you dress, mm -hmm. saying that you're acting particular ways just to be mm -hmm. a particular person. These are girls doing this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Groups of girls, frequently, and you're getting emotional just thinking about it now, aren't you? And you can't, can't do that one. How did it make you feel? Um, I, I convinced myself that they were right most of the time. What I, about, about? I would what? spend such a long time in the morning checking everything. Just if I do this one thing differently today, they won't pick up on it. But they did. Um, but they did. They found something else. Yeah. yeah. What are we doing about this, Tessa? Let me begin by saying the government takes bullying really seriously. It is absolutely intolerable. Nobody should be driven out of school in the way that Daniel has been driven out. And I find your story really appalling. And I feel very strongly that your school should have done more to help you and support you. Although, of course, Excuse we don't me. have the teachers here, perhaps, to, uh, uh, to speak up for how they see your particular case. But the government, in uh, uh, very early on, very soon after we came in, we have passed new legislation making it a requirement that every school should address the problem of bullying in their school. I think that that is absolutely vital. No school should be accepted from this rule, even if they think that bullying isn't important. Tessa, the other thing, can I just finish one more yeah. thing I want to say and then, then uh, do come in. Uh, the other thing that I think is really important is that we should address it immediately it's identified. So every young person who feels that they're being picked on and bullied should try to talk to their teachers, to their parents, mm. to anybody else in authority who they think can help them. Every pupil who witnesses, every every pupil who witnesses bullying has got to be. I want the kids first. Okay. It's yeah. easy to write it down, have somebody sitting there typing it away, and read it out to yourself. Mm. But it's on paper, it's ink, and and you say once it's been addressed, or once the person has come forward, what is hard is actually coming forward. It took me three years to be able to admit to myself that it was something worth talking about. Mm. I convinced myself that it wasn't going to be taken seriously, and that. Because you blamed yourself as a result of it, as the school was Because they convinced me that they were right. And, and dealing with it. To tell it when it comes to the government, I find that this government are not dealing with it in the appropriate way. I find that there are thousands of children, just like Danielle, there are other children in the audience today, have been uh, neglected <coughs> because they haven't got a, an education as a result of the government being so totally negative. On our helpline, we have 20,000 calls. And they are from victims, of, uh, like from the parents and the children. And they are uh, conveying to us well, if we're not getting past the teacher, the head teacher, nobody's dealing with this uh, situation. What do, you want, what do you want them to do? I want you to change the policies. I want you to what, what do you want them to say? Well, then I will say that there's a scheme that which I feel, I, I thought this one up, it may work, but I, 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 I stand behind it 101%.
because I feel like every school, uh, the government should implement that the schools have a point system mm. and uh, when the point systems, each school is allocated the same and if the school is doing positive work within, uh, bullying, within the field of bullying, you award them more points. If they're not dealing with it in a very positive way, you take away the points. And if all their points are gone, then you, obviously, you punish them. You say, well, look, you know. How? Well, by, by fining them. Give them a fine. Hit who's going to pay the fine? Sorry? Me and you are going to pay the fine. No, no, the school's out of the pocket, out of the money they've been allocated and who's by that the gonna government. going to hurt? Well, it's going to hurt somebody. Oh, yeah, it's going to hurt the pupils. No, no, no. Of course no, it no, is. It's no, my money and your no. money. It's the kids' money but they're going to pay the, the day, fine the with. government, you know, these, uh, these policies and all that, they're, these people... Sack the teachers might be the answer. No, but no, no. Pay. You can't tell them of all the same brush well, If you're going to no. punish them, you are. That's a collective fine you're no, imposing, Roger. No. Yes. Um, we know since the Zeebrugge disaster that managing directors... Turn around. Are, sorry. No, no, to Tessa. To Tessa, you're talking to Tessa. <laughs> we know, sorry well, I hope you're not going to start telling me. <laughs> we know that managing directors of companies now are now criminally liable for the health, safety and welfare of their employees. Now, we know, we were told the other week, that we live in um, a society that has institutionalised racism and by implication there must be institutionalised bullying. Now, if we can make our company directors criminally liable for the health, safety and welfare of the people that are involved in their undertaking, then we should make every uh, at county level, every education officer, every school's welfare officer, every prison governor, every admiral, every general. And put the criminal liability and upon them. You're saying them this from for experience of your children. Absolutely, what yes. Happened to your children? Yes. Well, the complaint gets made, and the thing is, you have the disparity amongst schools, whereby um, each school has its own autonomy to work out its procedures with the school governors. Your and kids were bullied. It, it's a hot. Well, my one son. My yes. son. And it's a hotchpotch. There, there needs to be a uniformity right across the country to address this problem. It is institutionalised bullying, and it exists in every, not just schools, but in it prisons, in the barrack room, on board ship, ship two everywhere. Yeah, we're talking about schools. Two points there, though. The two, two, two main, more, but two main ones. One is that it, it, the Health and Safety Act analogy is actually quite interesting, and uniformity which actually one, the one would follow the other. If you actually introduce a kind of responsibility along the Health and Safety Act lines, like we have here, which we're, obje we're subject to in this very studio as we're, as we're behaving here today, then you would get that uniformity of practice, wouldn't you? Well, I, I want to just first of all say that the government isn't negative about this. The government is positively determined to do something to crack down on bullying. We are the first government that has actually brought legislation into Parliament passed a new law requiring schools to have an anti-bullying policy. Yes. That is new. Policy is if you let me just finish. That, that, that is very no, important. No. In the past, schools have not been required to do this. Every school in the country has now got to consider how they're going to handle the incidents of bullying, which I share with you. Mm. I share I think, your view. I think it's a lot of people, we have got Tessa, to do something a lot of about people it. obviously oh, want to talk to you. I'm going to go with the flow. You want to talk to the minister, you talk to the minister. Yeah. I think there has to be a coordinated effort from the government. There must be a, some sort of committee that is set up whereby the bullying can be gauged, that uh, the, they can know what's happening in the schools, that reports. When a child reports that they are bullied, that is logged, it is sent to this committee. The committee should, be, should have teeth, they should be able to say uh, what can be done. This is because you were bullied. I was bullied, but my son, more, more importantly, he's five years old, I've had to deal with a case in his school recently. I went in to see the school, I jumped on it immediately. I went in to see the school, I asked them to, to get the headmaster, to get the, the form teacher together, and they came and we sat and we talked about it. I made a point that every child has a right to have a, a free place of learning, a place where they feel safe to learn, which will contribute to learning. You cannot coordinate. You cannot even go out without chucking up. You cannot stop being late for school because you cannot think about anything else than what you are going to face when you go into that school. And I think that the government has a responsibility to get all their efforts coordinated. There must be a policy right across the board for every single school yeah. that they follow the same. Yeah. 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 I, 
I, can I just come back and say that I absolutely agree that no child should be frightened of going to school in the morning. Mm -hmm. No child should be driven out of school in the way that Danielle was. It's outrageous. We do really take it seriously. But I think the right way, if you could just let me finish, if you could just let me finish. I think the right way to really address these problems is to get every school and all its staff all its governors, not Thank just you. its teachers, but its support staff, its teaching okay. assistants, those who work in the play pl play playground, those who uh, work in the school canteen, to be committed. Now, the way to do this <laughs> is not to have some completely top-down system. You know, Why we're not? telling you you to do this because you will get a more effective response. But it's if not you working. Build we know it's not working. We, You're just advocating I'm the same process sorry, again. We're just starting this now. This is just new. This requirement that every school should develop their own anti-bullying policy. We can't That's trust the them way to get the commitment. We can't yeah. trust them too. We know that. No. Say say something. Andrea? Andrea? Something must be done. I mean, I'm now 37 years of age. I have a son who's eight years old. Now, I myself, from the age of eight, I was bullied terribly to the point I even ran away to Kenilworth for the day, then Stratford. Nice places that they, as they may seem. But I was so terrified to go to that school because of what pain I had to endure. And my poor mother, who, bless her, was sitting at the back there, had to endure the pain of seeing me looking like a rape right. victim turning up. And nothing was done at the school. And that's going back a long time. And even now, my son is being bullied. And today, he said, Mummy, I can't go into school. He's got a bruise on his back, had a bruise on his head, being kicked up in the playground. And, and he defended himself. One time, he defended himself. And the, the dinner lady saw him, and he got sanctioned for defending himself. And I went to see the school, and I said, please, what are you doing? With respect, what are you doing? Well, we're trying to make sure Matthew's in a group, but nothing is being done. And they, we're talking of a span of how many years? From when I was eight to 37. And my son is now even saying, Mummy, I'm too scared to go to school. Well, I, I accept that not enough has been done. Hang on, please, Dan, hang on. Go on. I accept that not enough has been done, and that's yeah. why this government is determined yeah. that this is something we're going to sort out. We're talking no about, child we're should talking be about bullying, and, and Andrea themselves. indicating the it effects really of how it stays with you later in life. The minister is saying the government it. takes it seriously. She's quite clearly concerned, as anybody would be about it. What do you want her to do? I think what worries me most is this, this idea that each individual school should be allowed to make decisions. It should be, like that lady up there said, right across the here, country. Here. It should be yeah. national. Yeah. And I tell you what, it should be a free strike. I have heard so many stories to hear today here about how victims are penalised and it's wrong. It should be a three strike. One, what, you get a three warning. Three strikes and you're out. That's right. Twice. To the bully we're talking about. Yes, yeah. twice you get suspended and the third time you're out. I don't want to know the reasons yeah. why. It's, it's the victims that are being penalised. I was, yeah. like this lady here, I was bullied dreadfully at school and, that, and I'm 40. And now my little girl is eight, and she's going through the same thing, and I'm not having it. I, I contacted that. the school two months ago when it first happened, and I requested that that child's parents should be brought into school and at least be told about what was going on. The school refused. Today, after I spoke to the headmistress again, after she knew I was coming on this show, she not only had the, this girl's mother in school, but had rung me back within three hours and said it was all sorted out. Power of Kilroy. <laughs> <laughs> it is, I tell you. I, I agree with the comment that we need to um, bring schools into line, but we have league tables to show the best schools in the country uh, on academic prowess. Why couldn't we have something the same for bullying? Why couldn't people see the schools they are sending their kids to and see how they rate with bullying, the bad things. Why should we only ever be given a false opinion of our schools? Tessa? Well, I think it's actually quite difficult to have Three an in objective round, measurement tables. of the extent of bullying in a school. It really is. We would have large numbers of people having to try to measure something which is actually really much more difficult to put in a league table than examination results. That doesn't mean to say that you can't do a great deal about this. And it is a requirement now for the first time ever under this government that schools should work out their own policies and involve everybody in thinking about it, it. Can't including be the parents, no, including the parents uh, who what? ought to be work. consulted and considered. Their views have to be taken very seriously. Through homeschool no. agreements, we want to, to, to involve parents in all of this and make sure that bullying and dealing with bullying is part of a homeschool agreement too.
I went to a, a secondary school where I was bullied for three years. And when we looked at secondary schools, we purposely went, chose to look through them to see the reputations. The school I went to was put across as being a wonderful school, both academically and it had a code of conduct that was supposed to, you know, safeguard its pupils. If that's true, then why did I spend three years being victimised? My son, Michael, has been bullied since he was in junior school. He's gone from verbal to physical. One boy actually burnt his ear and we took the boy to, school, uh, to court and he was removed from the school. The good thing now is I've worked with his, he his head of year, we've had many discussions and finally, at last, he has got a support. Uh, a guy called Chris is, goes into the school, Michael will go into him and the dinner hour would discuss how he feels, how he feels about the bullies. They tell each other jokes, but there is at last, uh, there is a, a positive side getting there. But not all schools are lucky to have this. Uh, Chris is not employed by the school, and I feel that there should be some sort of money put aside to employ someone... What, a kind of befriender? Yes, yes. Somebody who goes in almost like the kid's advocate. Yes, yes. I don't think it's, almost, it's almost like a legal thing there. Do you need that? The, the, advocate, should, the advocate should be the, the teacher, shouldn't it? The, the kid's yeah. befriender. Yes, I can... Shouldn't uh, yeah, they shouldn't need it, but the teachers have got so much on their plates... Oh, right. They're too busy, are they? Working. <laughs> working hard on the education level. That a pupil could go to him. Lucky enough, Michael's head of year, he could go into her office and say, such and such has hit me. And she'd say, right, sit down. We've got five minutes. Sit down. Tell me what happened. Go through it. And Michael would say, yes, I was pushed off my chair or whatever. And she would say, who was it? That child would have to go to her room after school. So like the, like the school attendance officer as used to be, you want yeah. the school bullying officer. Yes. Dan, yes. you've been listening to all of this. You've come a long way to, to join our conversation today. You're regarded as the world's expert on bullying in schools. What is it we should be doing that we're not doing? Uh, first, I'd like to say that <clears throat> if you listen here, there are a lot of different ideas of how to deal with these problems, and that would be very difficult for the government to, uh, to coordinate mm. these things. But the thing is, we have done research on this for about 20 years and developed an intervention program which has proven very effective and reduced the levels of bully victim problems by 50% or more in, in these schools. And we have ways of measuring this uh, uh, also very well. So Sorry, I think, I we, have, we, think we think we have a very good program which is used uh, in in the U.S. in what England. Pardon me. What you do? Yeah, some of the things uh, important thing is first that you measure the whole school, uh, the level of problems, both direct and indirect bullying. You have better supervision, supervision vision system during break periods. You develop class rules against bullying, which are followed up in regular class meetings. And if you have an identified bullying problem, you must develop an inter individual intervention plan. So you've got really you're talking about a, a complete strategy. A complete strategy, a whole working package. at the school level, at the class level, and at the individual level. And with parents as well. With parents as well. Well, certainly. I very much welcome what uh, Dan has just said. That is exactly the kind of thing the government wants to see every school in the country developing. This it has to go from top to bottom in the school. At school, which I'll give you. Uh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> very great. What about we talk about? What about teachers, Hazel? Do they do enough? No, no. I don't think teachers do enough. I don't think schools do enough at all to, um, to protect. I, I, my belief is that the. The perpetrators are protected and uh, the victims are left to suffer. That's my belief. Can I, can they, did, did, no, 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 did, they didn't do enough with your daughter? No, they didn't do enough. Um, I didn't get enough support um, with my daughter. What was happening to her? Um, Susie had, um, that's why I can identify it, was emotional and verbal abuse um, for about three months. What kind, how old was Susie? Susie was 14. 14. And how long did this, that's all right, take your time. Right. Take your time, you've got all the time in the world. It's all right, she's all right. She was 14 years old yeah. and um, the physical, uh, the, the verbal and emotional abuse had started. Like the girls, it was um, so-called friends who had turned against her. You were picking on um, 
I think it ended up about 15 girls turned against her. Susie had a congenital abnormality of the kidneys and she, she, she had a bedwetting problem and this was, um, you know, at 14 years old, can you imagine this happening at school, you know, children sort of turning against her. She was a very pretty girl. Um, I think there was a lot of jealousy involved in it as well. Um, she, she was just, um, but, but, but like, like the girls, she, um, Susie was a very gentle person, but she almost became sort of aggressive. She did not want me to confront, you know, although I said often enough, I'll go up to the school, um, I'll deal with it you myself, I'll deal on. with it. I didn't know the extent you knew, until after Susie had died. I did not know the children. Some, some, some children came to the house and told me the extent of how bad it was. And how bad had it been? It had been really bad. What kind of thing? Just basically, as I say, verbal and emotional abuse, sending her to Coventry, arranging her to meeting places and not turning up. Um, practical jokes in some ways. <sighs> no, 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 but they were practical jokes, but if it's yeah, on a con continuing wind-up basis. Yeah, but they just wouldn't leave her. You know, they continually wore mm. her down and down and down until she could take no more. And what did she do? She took her life. Because she was bullied. When you talk to the teachers about this, do you feel that they understood? Look at me. <laughs> Nobody they... understands. That's the problem. And until something, the length and breadth of Britain, children are still being bullied and nothing is being done about it. And until um, some sort of strategy. I am, I am a teacher. Yeah. Um, I don't know, there aren't many of us here. Um, uh, oh, there's three there's or four. I know where they all are. Don't worry. <laughs> I'm coming to them now. We all want to talk to them, don't we? Yes. I'm not defending the teaching profession, and I'm certainly not defending what happened in any of the cases that we've heard here. And all I can really do is speak from my own point of view in the situations that I'm in at the moment. Yeah. We have a bullying policy. We have had, had one for many years. We so have. Did Bowie have a bullying policy? Yeah, okay. There's, there's a difference between having a policy which the government wants to reduce, there's a, there's a difference between having it and making the policy work. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, so it's no good just having yeah. the policy, yeah. Yeah. you have to be able to implement it. Yeah. Um, <coughs> I think the lady here mentioned that she has an outside group or some people that were coming in. One of the things that we do in our schools, is we have a church group that comes in once a week on a lunchtime for anybody to go and see them about anything. Now, OK, if a child feels they can't approach a, a member of staff, that's someone else to listen to, something else that some, mm -hmm. another avenue they can go to. We introduce older students to the youngest students when they first come to us, another avenue that they can go to. I'm not going to go through our policy, but the way we try and deal with things at the school I'm at, which is an all-boys school of 700 and not far from here, we take anything seriously if it is brought to our attention. Now, I know that some people are saying, what about the instances where they're not brought to your attention? OK, let's just deal with the ones that are brought. If a boy comes to me and says, there is a problem with whatever, the very fact that he's come to me is serious enough for us to do something about it. It's not a question of saying, no, this is a minor thing, go what? A boy comes to me and says a boy is pushing at the bus stop. OK, I still don't get your point, though. No, no what I'm saying is... No, we, me? We, oh, no. I thought it was me that was okay, thick. I don't get your I'm point. so glad, <laughs> Hazel. Make your point, <laughs> teacher. Your we, point. We are, Make your point, what, teacher, what, quick. <laughs> what we're Sorry. saying is that we take it seriously and where I am, we intervene at the first possible what moment. Is, well, the, sl the slightest thing, but, but, the easiest but I, thing. Right, so, right. On, but I told the school, and the Tuesday yeah, before I'm not Susie, them at no, all, but I? what you're saying is yeah, that it's the minute somebody comes to the school and says my child is being bullied, you immediately implement something. Mm -hmm. I told them, Susie, and like like this little girl, Susie right. had constant migraines. She was sent home from the school the Tuesday before she took her life on the Sunday night, and I said then, my daughter can you tell me is what the being school bullied. Did? Pardon? What, can you tell me what action the school actually took? The school denied it. The school well, says bullying yeah. doesn't yeah. exist. <laughs> But and it's well, happening today. Well, I, I, it's still what happening. What you're doing is this whole thing and this whole anti-bullying policy is, first of all, it's asking people to be nice, which just doesn't work. No, and nice it's, and it's solving the problem after it's happened. Wouldn't it be just so much easier? It would save, it would have saved me the trouble. Danielle, Hazel's daughter, and everyone who is going through it, if you, if you just put this forward, that it, we're just not going to tolerate it, fair enough, it might go to the point where you have to scare people into not bullying. How do you do that? You, you, the punishment isn't enough. What's the punishment? People just think that they can How get away with them? it. What's the punishment? No, no, you see, Robert, it's all right. You, I, you're, blaming, you're blaming that, the minister no, and the headmaster <coughs> for talking in, in generalities. You're doing the same. But, OK. You're the expert. You've you're criminalised the, you're the people the that allowed it. What I thought was, what, what what I was going through wasn't serious enough and that I wouldn't be taken seriously to start off with. Right. 
and that's what bullies think as well. All mm -hmm. I did was call them a name. I'm not getting into it. trouble for just yeah. calling a name. George, what needs to be put forward? Do you understand forward? how important yeah. that is? Yeah, but I, I think, we're, sorry, but I think we're all missing something, and that is that bullying is not restricted to schools, mm -hmm. but it's not restricted to children. I'm quite sure that lots of adults would admit to having been bullied at some point of course. in yes, the workplace yes, yes. or in the street. George, I know that. Now, We've done programmes on bullying okay, at the but workplace, let's, let's but what we're talking further. about is schools. Yeah. We're talking yeah. about vulnerable okay, children but whose lives, education is being destroyed and whose lives are being blighted. Right. Her education was destroyed. Her life was, daughter's now, was the lost. Point, the point I'm coming to is that, in my view, bullying is only a symptom of a deeper and more general level of violence in our society. Oh, we're not going to blame look society. At the, uh, look oh, at come the on, George. Oh, no. To. Oh, no. Well, you know, it's true. Yeah, but, all right. No, I'm Every, sorry. Let, me, let come, me make the point. Because, listen, everything comes down to society. That's a cop-out. We know no. it's true, but it's no, also no. a cop-out. In the end, you've I got believe. to deal... In the end, you've got to deal with what is happening in your right. classroom, in your school, today. If and we have done it, just that. We have done just that. And if I can say, we have done just that, and a new campaign was launched only a few days ago, blessed by the Minister of State who isn't here and this is exactly what some of you have been asking for. It is a campaign nationwide for schools and its title Towards a Nonviolent Society addresses the school as a community saying everybody in that school, child or adult, has a similar responsibility to try and work towards Non-violence. Of course we do. We, we, don't, we, that we, we don't need a glossy document oh, to tell us we want non-violence in our... What we want to do is how you stop the violence, George. George that's OK, back to as you. long as the, the rules are going to be implemented. My daughter's been out of school for nine months. She was accused of making a racist remark by three girls, backed up by a teacher, which she never made. From that day on, she became the target of every black child in the school that thought they had an axe to grind. And I was told by the school that she couldn't take a joke. She was punched, she was kicked, she was attacked outside school. My husband was assaulted. And today, that's all I've got. She couldn't take a joke. She can't go on any school trips. She's currently being granted three hours a week home tuition because the school say that they cannot protect her. And to me, that just isn't good enough. What will you do about somebody like her? The, the racial sensitivity situation has gone into overkill at her school, I feel. I'm an ex-head teacher, and I can give you more examples than all of you put together can give me. And I've had to deal with those examples, and I have the greatest sympathy for the child, you whoever... It? Yes. Have of you? course, as an adult, have you? I have experienced bullying well, as an adult. I experienced. It I was bullied child. out of a job. I thought you were saying you bullied by me <laughs> then, because you were. <laughs> as an adult, you are mentally equipped to deal with that, or far better. better. These are children that we're yeah. talking about, and as an adult, I can yeah. deal with it now. I couldn't as a child, and my child is now going through the same thing. But it stays but, but with can you. you. Can you mm. accept it stays with you. that we have yes. to? We have Absolutely. to try and create for our children, because it's too late for us, but we have to try and create for our children the understanding that violence or bullying is abnormal. And we've got to say, look, there are other ways of dealing with conflict. If you disagree with your friend, find another way, apart from punching her in the eye. Sounds and good. don't respond. Sounds really good. Sounds wonderful, that. That sounds like, that sounds like Socrates, you know, going through the discourses. Does it actually work, Tessa? That's exactly, that is exactly what is missing from our education system. Socrates, there is no philosophy, there is only economics, Tessa. Oh, I wish I'd never said that. <laughs> I'd, like to, I'd like to pick up, up, up what you said really earlier, well. that it's not just about asking people to be nice. Um, of course it's not. Yet, I do think we all ought to ask people to be nice too. That is the first point. That is the starting point. If we can create an environment and an atmosphere why in our schools Roger, why are you shaking your head? It is very important that children should learn to be tolerant of other people. Even if they come from a different religious background, if they come from a different of ethnic of background, they have to learn to be tolerant. They have to learn to be tolerant of eccentricity. They have to be learn to be tolerant of people who have different views. If you can create in schools an ethos where that dominates, you will straight away make people feel more ashamed. And why haven't you bullying. created that but ethos? And that, I'll that. come back to you. Said, why haven't you created that ethos, that atmosphere in your school? If it is all so easy, George saying it's we need a easy. new, a non-violent approach. Yeah. If it's like Rowan says, why can't you teach people to be nice to each other? And Tessa picks up on that and says that's what we should be doing and creating that cooperative kind of friendly atmosphere. Why aren't you doing it? 
I mean, we, this isn't new, is it? I did a bullying programme 13 years ago here, and I'm hearing today the same things that I heard here 13 years ago. And the teachers are saying the same thing, and the minister, with respect, is slightly saying something new because she's got a strategy, but we haven't had any practices from it yet. Why? What? Down to you in the end. Well, it is, but you can book 2012 because you'll be doing it again in 13 years again. I don't want to be doing it I again. Know, I don't, I'm serious. I don't want to hear the tales but I've heard here, <coughs> some of which we're going to hear in a moment. I don't want to hear yeah. those. But I think uh, mm. some of the comments, I mean, teachers are trying to do some of these things. If you got a, this, and filled this audience with teachers, they'd be as horrified by your story as I am Absolutely. and as everybody else here is. Uh, teachers are trying to do something. We've very often been told what to do. The purpose of the policy, which Tessa has been talking about, is really to look at the hows, because that is the part which schools are sometimes struggling with. And it's what parents are sometimes <coughs> struggling with. It's what the pupils themselves don't know actually how they should be behaving. And there is a part, a part for schools to play and parents What's about teaching path? social behaviour. Right. It's teaching it, not telling them what, what it is, but actually teaching them, practising it, showing it by example and all the other things where they're actually going to learn some of these things that we really want to and see. And you need to do this, don't you? Because the fact of the bullying isn't just that it's causing the problems for Danielle while she's at school, where she can't concentrate, she can't read, she can't learn, she doesn't want to go to school. It stays with you. It does, yeah. For the rest of your life. Yeah, I mean, I was bullied at school, uh, and it's still the feelings of inadequacy, um, of, of being different. My daughter's been bullied at school, uh, and of this, this fear of having to go in to talk to these teachers about your daughter's problem, because they didn't listen to me when I went to them with my problems. And what was your problem? Um, it was just one particular girl, again, that was started off with, with verbal and, and actually finished up with physical. Um, nobody listened, nobody wanted to know, the school didn't want to know. Um, good Catholic schools, um, we teach forgiveness, the bully apologises, you accept the apology, you shake hands and off you go and everything's wonderful. And, and it isn't. And, and then you, you, you come into the same situation again when it's your child and you're going in through those school doors. What do they do to you now? I still feel this big when I go into school and I'm talking to the teacher about my daughter's problems. It only affects you when you're at school or does it affect you elsewhere? No, it's... it's uh, an inability to express yourself. It's this fear of, of, of actually standing up for yourself. I'd, I'd run a mile rather than face up to confront I can relate confrontation. To that. Andrea? Exactly what you're saying. You now, when I, I started when I was eight, yeah. same girl, the gang got larger and larger, yeah. and the bullying got tougher and harder and more yeah. brutal. Now. Now. The, now. What does it do now, to you now? Now. I am, I am suffering from a degenerative disease of the spine through lack of calcium, through anorexia, suicide attempts. And it is not being able to relate. I can't keep a job down. Luckily is enough... Is this because that's you or because you no, were bullied? I was bullied. I became very withdrawn. I was a hard worker at school. Bright, cheerful, happy girl. I used to mm. sing Lulu song. You know, I was happy. I was always... Oh, well, you really were dodgy, <laughs> weren't you? See, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I, I felt I was somebody until the bullying started. Yeah. Mm. And I got home one day from a youth club. This is outside of school. At a youth club, my mother had bought me a beautiful dress. I'd gone feeling great having a dance. Then the gang of girls got me in the cloakroom outside of home. And I went home. They th my mother thought I'd been raped. I was badly beaten up. And nothing was done. We contacted the police. Nothing was done. Nothing was done at the school. And it's, this is going back how many years? A long but time. The, and all these are the consequences that you're living with. Now, you Absolutely. were nodding your head vigorously when Andrea was talking about the kind of ailments and disabilities she now suffers from as a result of being bullied as a child. Yes. Why? Because um, I've got scoliosis, um, I've had it since childhood and um, I started off being bullied at infant school. I was pushed over in the playground. Obviously the other kids thought, oh she's different, we can have a laugh and make mincemeat of her. And I used to get called names by boys. And then I, when I was 11 years old, um, I went to a secondary modern school um, and there were 700 pupils, um, there was no discipline. Um, kids just ran riot, did what they liked. And you were bullied? And I was bullied, yes. And, and what, what are the consequences for you now? Uh, low self-esteem, self-doubt, um, times of depression. I try really hard to please people, too, too hard, some people say. What, you're trying to please them because you want to be liked? Yes, I want to be accepted. I want to be liked, I want to be loved. I try really hard, but I wasn't bullied. 
Is it sure it's because you were bullied? Because you're yes. afraid of what? Rejection or mm. being intimidated? Yes. Is that what it is? You're ingratiating? Yes. yes, I mean, the situation was at the secondary modern school where I was. Um, it, I was just coping with intimidation all the time. And one particular afternoon, um, <coughs> I'd been fed up with being picked on. And, uh, and one of the girls who was a ringleader of the bullying, she stood up and said, well, are you going to do my homework? So I said, no. Yeah. And uh, so I, I, I said, I, I refused to do it. And so she picked up a chair and threw it at me. And it hit me. And nobody came to my aid. There was no teacher there to care. Mm. I went on to the next class and I was in tears and shocked and stunned. What should we do? I think the government should do more. There should be more discipline in schools. Um, they should take tougher action. There should be stricter rules. You want, they're taking it very seriously. You heard Tessa say they're taking it very seriously. We're going to have a strategy. Dan's going to give them their book. Hot press all the way from Norway. What do we do? What do we do? Hang on, Dan. What do we do? Now, hang on, Dan, please. I'm asking the kids. At the moment, in our school, we recognise we've got a bullying problem, which I think you agree is half the, half the battle. Um, we actually have a pupil mentor system, which is a team of 39 students, all of whom have been trained by Kidscape. Uh, we provide a service where we listen to our colleagues if they've got any problems. Colleagues, you mean others? Our students. Students, yeah. Um, our friends. Right. People in lower years. So you're the befriender, like our, our friend along the line there was talking about, only she brings in an adult from outside. You're saying you bring other school friends? Yeah. We, we create a, a community. But that's there anyway. Not. We create something where, where students who do have difficulties feel like they can turn and talk to a friend. And does it work? Yes, I think it does. How do you measure how it works? You well, mean, first of all, people come to you, presumably. They do, they do come and confide in you and tell you what's happening, yeah. The next thing is, does it actually stop bullying? I'm not going to know. It's no. definitely not going to stop mm. it, but it's Prevent helped. Yeah. Reduce it. Yeah. It does reduce it. Tessa, we're almost at the end of the programme. We've got a, a minute or so. Are these ideas that are worth taking on board? Very much so. I just want to follow on from what I was saying. It's about creating a climate in a school where bullying becomes completely unacceptable. <coughs> and I think what the pupils can do is to contribute to that. Now, I also want to say that if, even in a good climate, you find a child who is violent, bullying, indulges in verbal abuse in terms of how he or she treats other children, teachers have got to clamp down on that and they've got to do something with it. That child probably needs some help too. That child certainly needs uh, to be taken out of the class, given some additional instruction, told about the damage that he or she is doing. And if that kind of sport doesn't work, that child may need to be excluded from school, even if only temporarily, until he or she can have the kind of support and learn that that behaviour is completely unacceptable. Daniel, what should we do? Well, I think the schools, my school has tried to do everything it can, but we can't, they, they're not allowed to do yeah. what they want to do. Which is what? Well, I suppose suspend, exclude. You want the schools to have more power to deal yeah. with them, whether it's discipline or whether it's exclusion, yeah. you want them to be able to deal with that. Yeah. They're the experts, that what they say, nobody, nobody has got the right to make your life a misery. Whatever age you are, wherever you are, nobody's got the right to intimidate you and you don't have to put up with it. If you're being bullied at school, then make sure your mum and your dad know and make sure the teachers know and tell them they've got to do something about it. And if they don't, write to me. I won't wave a, wave a magic wand, but we'll try to help. Take care of yourselves. If you'd like to join Robert in a programme about older mothers, call him now on 0990 200 567. Were you the child of an older mother? Did you resent her age as you were growing up? Are you an older mother? Do you regret having your child so late? Or were you able to cope better because you were older? Call now.
Sunday's show is dedicated to the people's favourite programme, EastEnders. Our audience tell EastEnders bosses how they want to see the storylines unfold. EastEnders regular Roy will be here to reveal what life's really like in Albert Square and his great new Viagra scandal. Will it work or won't it? Plus, gorgeous chef Ros Burden rustles up the perfect TV dinner. The Vanessa Show at 10 past 10. Take a dozen chefs. Ladies and gentlemen, you've now bought Peter Victoire. Congratulations. It stirs them well. We mustn't underestimate the scale of the job we've got to do. Heat until boiling point. You are serious now, isn't it? You yeah. wrote it before and you never asked the Bank of Scotland Wait, and you never told them the same as that. Ah, the little je ne sais quoi. Yes, I think something amusing. So we'll paint the girl without any because I'm Et voila! <laughs> a recipe for success, trouble at the top. Wednesday, 9.30, BBC Two. We'll be foolish not to be daunted. A bit of well-deserved TLC now on BBC One in Style Challenge. Is to care for the refugees whilst.